Well, hello. It's been a minute since I did a vlog. Um, if you haven't, if you haven't watched my other videos on YouTube, I think this is maybe video number three, where I kind of talk about my struggles. Um, and I started it with like hormones, hoping that I could reach somebody, which, you know, I have. Um, even if my story can help one person, it's one person that isn't struggling with hormones and finding answers, but there was a part that I was leaving out and I left it out because I wasn't ready to share that part. Um, but it happened at the same time that I realized that I was starting to see a hormone specialist. So not only was I suffering from perimenopausal symptoms, um, but my business was failing <laughs> um, or starting to fail. And it snowballed and it was a lot. It was a lot. I wasn't ready to share that part. Um, and not that you can relate exactly to my story, but I, I think there's parts of my story that everybody can relate to. Um, so, like I said, the other videos start, the, the journey started back in August. Um, and while I was getting help with my hormones, I, um, noticed some, some things going on in my business. Things weren't, you know, I have ebbs and flows that I had tracked from years previous and nothing was matching up. Um, none of my, none of my, uh, information that I had from the previous years was matching up to the current year and I didn't know what was wrong and don't, you know, listen, I was doing all the things I was, you know, I changed marketing. I, um, I had my advisors and my CPA and I had people looking at my P and L's, you know, what am I missing something? Um, then I thought, okay, well come January, everything's better in January and January comes and goes and it's not better. And that's when I really started to worry, when I started to get through January. And probably somewhere around February, I, you know, I'd been talking with my husband this whole time and, you know, I wasn't shy. I talked to the appropriate people. There's a lot of people that didn't know what was going on because when you own a business, nobody wants to hear the crappy stuff. But, and there's a lot of key points here. Um, my biggest, my biggest point that I want to make is I had people to talk to. The circle was very small. Um, people that I have trusted with my business and have seen the ugly side of me and the great side of me and love me for me. Um, that circle is who I talk to. So my point one that you're going to walk away with anything is have somebody to talk to. Um, I was also talking to a therapist through all this, um, when I actually admitted out loud to my husband that I think it was time to put on the table that I needed to close my meal prep business. Um, it was the first time in eight months that I really cried. And I mean, like really cried. Um, my husband is, he's my person. Um, and I cried, I cried probably the hardest that I had ever cried. Um, and it was tough and it was tough for about three months. And when I say tough for about three months, I, and I, I, I these, it's, this isn't the right words, but I have a newfound respect for depression. Um, mine was situational depression. What was going on? I mean, in my mind, I was closing my business to my staff, hard conversation. I was closing my business. Um, and it took me, it took me three months, about three months. And, you know, my husband would ask how I was doing and I was honest with him. And I said, it's tough. I'm having a hard time getting up in the morning, getting out of bed, going anywhere, one foot in front of the other. It's difficult. It's very difficult. But my second point, um, through an injury through CrossFit, I actually, stumbled into and became very diligent with yoga. Um, 
yoga. What I realized was I was doing it for phys my physical issues, but what it really helped with were mental issues. The mental part, the stopping, just stopping every night um, and doing yoga. And sometimes I would cry on the mat. Um, I would do breathing exercises. I mean, I really did yoga. I listened to her. I followed. Um, <clears throat> and I was talking to people. Um, and I was reading books. And I've mentioned my books. The two books that stand out to me are Let Your Fears Make You Fierce and The Universe Has Your Back. I mean, I really listened to those books. And those books spoke to me. Um, so my second point that I want you to take from this is you know, have an outlet. It's hard. It was hard to do that every day. But I think what scared me is I can see how that black hole can swallow you up. Um, I can see how, you, how when you're depressed, how you can go to that dark place and find it very, very hard to get out. Um, you know, when I would talk to my husband, I would say, you know, listen, don't worry. I'm doing all the things. And I, and I told him, I said, I promise you, if I feel like I'm getting swallowed up, I will reach out for help and I will, you know, say, Hey, listen, I, I'm really struggling. I mean, I was struggling, but I admitted it. Um, and I was talking about it to the right people. Um, and in my mind, I needed to go through all. Now I'm, I'm kind of telling you this because, you know, through talking to people is where I found a new avenue for my business that now instead of closing, um, I created, um, a, a shared kitchen and that idea made sense, but it was my advisors that, you know, it was my, you know, it was people that I was talking to by having a conversation, having those really crappy conversations with people. One, it helped me talk about it and it helped me. I didn't go public with it because at first when I talked about it, I, I was angry and I cried and I was a mess. I mean, I could only imagine if, I was just talking to my clients and my business and all that. And I just broke down and I was angry at the economy and I was angry at clients. I was just, I was angry at everybody. Um, I felt like a failure. I, um, I, I was ashamed, um, that I had failed, that I was this, you know, everybody, I felt that everybody just was going to go, oh my gosh, Ani of all people has failed and I was going to let people down. And it was really, re I mean, between the hormones and my weight gain and this business struggling, I hit new lows, new lows for my self-esteem, new lows of sadness. Um... I was, I was probably the lowest, the lowest I had. I mean, listen, I felt like I was failing in all aspects. I had a meal prep company that was failing. I own a meal prep company and I couldn't lose weight. Um, I had these hormone issues. And one of the things that, um, one of the things that helped me, I think, was being able to talk about it. And in my mind, I had to process, I had to process that my business was closing. I mean, listen, I had even planned the goodbye video, which I cried every time I thought about it. I mean, I closed my business in my mind and one thing that I realized through this entire thing was probably about a month after that, my husband asked me how I was feeling. And I said, I have to admit that I'm a little happy that it's coming to an end. And he was like, really? And I said, yeah, I'm tired. And I realized that the common denominator for every problem I was having, 
my biggest problem with my hormones and my weight gain and and this business was stress. Um, and I did. I thought, I, I can't. I can't. My 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 health is failing because I'm so stressed out. And you know, I talked about you know having those people in your corner. You know, when I was not a single, this is how I know, and this is what you look for. If, you, if you're like, gosh, I don't know if I have anybody. This is what I looked for. My dear friends that I talked to, um, anybody that I, I talked to that helped me with my business, my business advisor, my CPA, um, a couple mentors that I have. As low as I felt, and even when I admitted, like, I feel like I have failed, not a single one of my people, my tribe, agreed with me. <laughs> they said, you're not a failure. You're, you're by far a failure, my mom included. You know, she said, Ani, you've been going for seven years. It's okay to stop. Um, and my business advisor said something to me that really hit home. In fact, that's what stuck through me through this whole thing was maybe Paleo Num Yum's meal prep wasn't what I was meant to do. It just put me on the path and opened the door for what I was supposed to do. So when I had this conversation with my CPA and that's how the shared kitchen came about, it all made sense. Everything made sense. How I was supposed to downsize the, the, the next trajectory of how it was supposed to go. And I felt unlost again and I really found myself. Um, but I truly believe that I had to go through those really hard three months um, because of the yoga and the meditation and the books and really, really like looking inside, like what are my fears? What am I afraid of? You know, what do I do from here? I didn't know, but I was so busy. I had to force myself to stop and I had good people in my ear and, you know, of course my husband was like, listen, I'm not worried about what you're going to do after paleonomiums. Just get through this part and whatever happens next happens next. I mean, I'm still a nurse. Gosh, listen, I could go back to work as a nurse if I had to. I mean, I didn't want to, um, but I, I am, I implore you to have an outlet, have a couple people that you can talk to. Um, listen, I have, I have realized that it all works out. Um, I have amazing friends, like the best friends, um, the best staff. Um, they were, you know, I was very, I, I also say, be honest, be so honest. I mean, I had to have some really hard conversations with my staff and we all had, we all, we all grieved. I mean, at one point we all thought we were closing and that was hard. It was so hard. Um, so I'm, t I'm telling my story because I think that this is the aftermath of the last two years. And I said it, I said that this was going to be hard. I just didn't realize it was going to be this hard. And if people can get anything from my story and it touches you in any way and helps you in any way, and oh my gosh, if you are going through sadness or depression or something, please, I, and if you don't have somebody, reach out to me um, because that was scary. Um, it was scary, but 
I, I had, I mean, first of all, I had my husband, which I mean, I, I, I couldn't have, I couldn't have gone through it. It was probably one of the greatest things that we have ever gone through. I mean, we've been through ups and downs. We've gone to therapy. We've learned how to communicate, but this because he's a fixer and he couldn't fix it. And I was sad. I mean, God bless it. I was, I was sad. And the hardest part was being sad at home and having to fake it. I listen for three months. I felt like a fraud. People would come into the store and they would be like, oh my gosh, we, I love you. Like, what am I, I would, I could never, I don't know what I would do if you guys weren't here. And we had already made the decision to close and they would leave the store and me and my staff would cry. So I guess I should also add, you truly do not know what's going on behind closed doors and what struggles people are going through. And it's scary. It's scary to know that there are people out there without a support system. And I'm sorry. And there are people out there that are struggling and they don't know how to get out um, or what to do. And I mean, listen, I didn't know if any of this stuff would work, but I was going to do anything at that point because I, that's where I was. I was so low that, um, I would have done anything and it was helping. Um, I, I think that's probably, I will say that's my biggest flex in the beginning of starting my business is I've never been afraid to ask for help. Um, for with anything, and I'm just saying just with business in general or something was going wrong, there's, there's people that know what they're doing. <laughs> and at the time I knew that I was not making good decisions for myself and I needed people to tell me what to do. I'm always the one that tells people what to do and I couldn't do it anymore. Um, I leaned on those people around me and they got me through it and I listened to them and I just did it. I put myself on autopilot and I was like, you know, Kurt told me to read these books. I'm going to read these books. Yoga, they say yoga is good for you. I'm going to do yoga. Um, you know, I'm going to talk to my therapist because, you know, I need to get this out. I need to. And the more I said things out loud, the easier it was to reconcile. And I got to the point where I could start talking to people about it or talking to my husband or talking to my advisors and I wouldn't, and I would be rational and I would not cry. And then I thought, okay, I'm, I've reached a point, but I, I do believe that keeping it all bottled up inside, a hundred percent wouldn't recommend. Absolutely not. Because when I started talking about it, and I hear those words, it was hard to hear because what you hear in your head and what comes out loud almost were two different things. And I needed to hear it out loud to believe it, understand it, and go through it. Um, I needed to feel all those feelings because when this idea for the shared kitchen came about, it was easy. I, it wasn't easy. I mean, it hasn't been easy, but it was, it flowed. It was organic and it just kind of made sense. And I got my mojo back. Um, but it was a fight. It was a fight. So hopefully I have, listen, and I've talked to people and then talking to people, you realize that there's so many people that are struggling and if my story can help you, help a friend, pull somebody out, um, then, uh, then it's what it's meant to be. Um, you know, I made a list of pros and cons of things that I didn't, I liked or didn't like about my business. And the biggest pro was that 
I got into this to help people. Um, and I wasn't, I, I had gotten to the point in my meal prep business that, you know, COVID kind of brought us back in, brought me, me back into the day in and day out of the kitchen. And I didn't feel that I was helping people the way I wanted to help people. And the shared kitchen, I get to help people. I get to help other businesses because what I also realized in the shared kitchen is this whole time I had been ashamed that my business was failing and I was embarrassed. And once we came up with the idea of a shared kitchen and I started kind of looking on social media and I saw all these businesses, you know, how I need an employee, but how do you pay them? Um, uh, you know, things are so expensive. I'm going to have to raise my prices and I don't know how, you know, everybody's going to take this. And, you know, it was just one struggle after another from all these businesses, especially food-based businesses. And that's when I realized that I have a big mouth. I have somewhat of a platform and instead of being ashamed that my business was failing, maybe I should scream it from the rooftop and say, hey, <laughs> I'm not doing well. Like I have this idea that can help my business and lots of other businesses. And the response that I have gotten tells me that this, this is what I'm supposed to do. But I would not have realized that this is what I'm supposed to do if I didn't go through the really crappy time. And I've been told multiple times in my business, when you when you hit this point and you don't know what to do, like what's the next thing? This is where you sit. You sit in this really uncomfortable space and you figure it out. Um. But for me, sitting every night in yoga and turning my brain off in the midst of all that was happening allowed me to prioritize my thoughts and my emotions. Um, and it was, I, I had to go through that to realize what was on the other side because it made all of this make sense. It made downsizing my business, my meal prep business make sense because the shared kitchen made sense. It made sense not just for me, but for so many others. So reach out to me, reach out to somebody, um, do the things, you know, whatever brings you joy, um, you know, and it's funny, I, Really, essentially, you can't remove, for me, I knew I couldn't remove the stress. I, I You can't, you're going to have stress in your life, but I could manage my stress better. And what I've done is learn how to manage my stress better. And it's made the world of difference, but I had to slow down long enough to realize what the problem was, the root cause of the problem. Yes, I have all these problems, but what is at the root cause? And if you're there, ask yourself why. Why are you crying? Because of this, okay? Well, why? Go back until you're like, and that is the problem. And that's the problem you need to fix. Instead of fixing the 15 problems, you're really only fixing the one problem that is the root cause to all your other problems. And I'm not saying I'm completely healed because there's days that I still am overwhelmed and I get stressed out, but go back to basics. It's okay. This is what I've learned. It's okay to stop. It's okay to change. It's okay to go, I'm not happy. And then figure out what you have to do to make yourself happy. So... Thank you for listening to me. If none of this makes sense,